I think the talk of herd immunity is extremely dangerous and nihilistic. I think we can do better as humanity. We do not know, first of all, whether immunity is lasting in COVID, one. Two, we don't know what proportion of the population would have to be immune to have what we call herd immunity. It may be as high as 60 percent. To have 60% of the population infected would, uh, and, and we know that about 4%, 2 to 4% of people die. So that's a death toll in, in the hundreds and hundreds of millions. I think that is an unacceptable moral choice for us to make. I think rather we should employ people to be contact tracers, to deliver the food to the sick. We should be ramping up PPE to protect people, to do their work. If we harness the trillions of dollars uh, that are needed right now to prop up the stock market and, and the global economy toward creating jobs that would actually end the epidemic and could be synergized with the needs of the vulnerable to end the epidemic, that is a far better moral choice. And it's probably a, a faster choice to end the epidemic, uh, certainly and a much more moral choice than and, herd immunity. Uh, but how does We're this working... work specifically? I mean, the, uh, you're, you're saying something like 300,000 people would be needed in the United States to do this. Yes. And you actually yes. go to a patient and you say, who have you been with over the yes. last what? And yeah, so since the time you were symptomatic and a couple of days before, and what we know is that with social distancing, this is a bit easier. Our average uh, person in Massachusetts so far in the two weeks we've been doing this only has a couple of contacts because people are adherent to social distancing. So what you can do then is contact those people if, uh, and then try to keep them safe. So for example, in my situation, my family, I, um, I live with my mom mom who's older. And so we would want to, if I had been in contact with someone, so I was out uh, to do uh, grocery shopping, if I had been in contact with someone, I would need to quarantine, which is different than social distancing. It means not sharing a bathroom. It means washing down all the counters, et cetera. And so if I could not do that, then I would need a safe place to quarantine. And, and here in Massachusetts, we're looking at dormitories, hotel rooms, and many people want to do this. I mean, many health workers are begging for these kind of safe quarantine places where you would then stay for 14 days as a contact, monitored regularly, um, fed, right, uh, have uh, access to a cell phone so you can contact your family. And this is, again, all voluntary. But this is part of how we do epidemic control. This is how we fought Ebola. 14 days of tracing uh, and monitoring, and then you can... You can um, be released, but that way you don't you don't infect your closest contacts because most of this infection is spread through very close contacts, family members, etc.